Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Kelly Gamont. I'll say it again, Gamont. Um, that's a question I get a lot, so that's how you say my last name. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about App Camp for Girls and how I became an admin on accident um, and what doing that sort of means for me as a new person, officially, I guess, as a Mac administrator, and what that means for uh, other people who have been at it a little bit longer than I have and how all of us can work together and make everything better for everybody. It's super duper great. So the first thing I want to do is tell you a little bit about App Camp for Girls for people who do not know. Um, if I look familiar, it might be because you saw the video on Indiegogo, that was me. Because um, <laughs> uh, I'm one of the few people that will stand up and go, yes, if that's a thing that needs to happen, I will go talk to people about a thing or do video for you or go on a podcast. Uh, so if you close your eyes, I might sound really familiar to you, you just don't always get to see me very much. So, uh, yeah, there for a minute I was going to go off about Westworld because that's one of the other podcasts I do. Um, and we can talk about that later. Like, when I say, is there any questions? Like, if you have questions about Westworld, we can chat. That's totally fine. Um, the, what App Camp does, for people who don't know, it's a week long summer camp for girl, over the summer going, uh, for girls going into eighth and ninth grade. And we introduce them to iOS development. So, by the end of the week, we have given them a framework of code. They have to generate all the content, all the artwork, the icons, uh, all of the work that goes into having a fully functioning app on Friday. They come in cold Monday morning with whatever experience they have. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's a lot. And by Friday afternoon, they have a completely functioning app, and they have put together a slide deck to present that app to a panel of investors. Those investors then ask them a few questions about their app. Basic stuff, like if you had another day, what would you do? Or what would the 2.0 version of this look like? Things like that so that they've thought a little bit about it. And they do have to have some basic questions answered for their particular app. If it's free, how are you making money off of it? And if you are charging, how much? And how are you going to get the word out to people about what your app is and how it's awesome and how much they need it? So part of what my slides are going to be, spoiler alert, I've put in a couple that are actually relevant to the stuff that I'm saying, but most of my slides are going to be screenshots from those presentations. We give them an opportunity to show off screenshots of their apps. So you're going to get to see what they're doing. And part of the reason that that's awesome to me is because you get to see why it is, what it is that I am finding the value in. This is why I'm doing this and staying up really late and reading and coming to Los Angeles on my birthday to get to talk to you guys and learn all of this stuff because it's a, it's a big deal to me. So you will get to find out a lot about that. Um, do please feel like you can stop me and ask me a question during, like if I say something that doesn't make sense or you want to hear more about, uh, please do that. I would much rather do that than stand up here and hurl information at you for a while and then you forgot what it was you really wanted to know. So I don't, I don't want that to happen. Um, one of the other things I can tell you about App Camp for Girls is that at the end of the summer we take all of the apps that all of the girls built in all of the locations where we are that year and we bundle them up into what we call the quiz compendium and it's available on the app store for 99 cents. So every, every summer, every kid who comes to camp goes back to school as a published app developer. The reason that warms my heart is because there was a girl that came to camp one of the first years we were there and she decided to join the computer camp at her high school. She walked into the room, and she was the only girl, and they asked her if she was in the right place, and if she knew where it was that she was supposed to be. And she said, I have a published app in the app store, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if she had a mic, she could have dropped it at that moment. And uh, I won't, Andy, it's okay. Um, <laughs> this one's safe. Um, but that's the, the sort of thing that warms my heart, and that, like, that moment is what we're trying to do. And so, like, that's, for me, that's a very concrete example of why this matters. Because I wouldn't have had that good an answer when, actually, I didn't have that good an answer when I was asked in high school. I, I've, I won't repeat when I told people who asked me questions like that when I was in high school. Uh, so if you want to support App Camp in a small way, you can support App Camp by going to the App Store and buying one of the compendiums there at Bella. If you want to support in a bigger way, this is a special link. We have a fundraiser going right now because we are trying to expand to three new cities in the next three years. And to do that, we need to make sure that we have an organization in place that is sustainable and that going forward we will be able to build out as far as we want to. We want three new cities in the next three years, and then after that, we want to continue to grow. Um, the number one question I get asked about App Camp 
is uh, when is it coming to my city? And the way that we make that happen is with volunteers. And there are lots of ways for all of you to volunteer. Um, and one of those is uh, you can volunteer a portion of your money to our organization. Uh, we are 501c3, it's tax deductible. So if you were to just straight donate, it's straight tax deduction. You have to deduct the value of the perks if you go get perks. Uh, the notebooks are super awesome. I've seen them really, really cool. Uh, I recommend those highly. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm done with all the fundraising and stuff. I just want to give you guys an idea of what the organizations I work for, and it should be pretty clear to you how much it means to me personally. So now you understand why I'm going through all of the stuff that uh, I'm going through in order to be here. This is one of the things that happened uh, this last summer. We were updating AppCamp hardware. Uh, we have laptops, and uh, each of the developers at camp has an iPad or an iPod that they get to take home every night during the week. Uh, because they build apps, and they build them out at the end of the day, and they can take them home. Monday evening, they go home with an application. Look, I built a calculator today. I can show you what I did. And it's a very concrete thing. If anybody here has, has everybody here built something to an iPod or an iPhone or something at, at some point, like even just as a test? And how does it feel when you, do, when you get it on there and you tap, and then it does the thing that you built? Like, it's amazing. And we do that on Monday. So the, uh, each of those cases, those are, um, uh, they're light pelican pieces, but the name of them is not pelican. They have a lot of stickers on them from places. If you have stickers you would like to have on some of these boxes there, you can tell there's spots available. We had to get a couple of handles repaired. There's actually another case that's not in the picture, because uh, that handle wasn't broken, so we didn't have it the day that I took this. Uh, each of these contains six MacBook Pros, a dozen iPods, all of the cables and chargers and screen wipes that go along with all of that, and we've recently added iPads to that equation. So this was the point where I sort of looked up and went, um, uh, are we managing any of this stuff? Like if I drop this giant case with squillions of dollars of equipment in the mail, you know, and FedEx can't seem to get it to Chicago, like, do we have any sort of recourse? We're insured, but how do I know which ones are the ones that are gone? And the reply was, that's a good question, Kelly. You ask really good questions. Can you find the answer? Let us know. <laughs> and that's how I became a med admin, buddy. Uh, so I did, the problem is I did tech support for a really long time, and so uh, you know I hear something like that, and I go, here are the nine squillion ways, give or take, that this is going to let you down. I know all the ways this could possibly go wrong. So I ended up as an administrator. Um, no, because knowing there was a person who existed who could do that kind of thing, knowing that was a role in the world, uh, made me the person who knew the most about it at AppCamp. So uh, once this became reality, I did the only reasonable thing I think of to do. I went to Twitter. And just came out with it, this is what I'm doing, here's my deal. The first person to reply to me was Ed, who said, hello and welcome, you were one of us. Anyway, come to the Slack. And by the way, you should talk to me about conference this year. And so that's how I ended up CK. <laughs> that's why you're getting the talk you're getting right now. You can just watch them and pull the notes on Twitter. Uh, so I joined the Mac Admin Slack. And once I was in the Mac Admin Slack, someone said, I've written uh, books about this that are building at bookstore. Let me give you a promo code, because that came awesome. And someone else said, what is it that you need to do? And you know, what is this other thing that, that we can help you with? Because this is a, a concrete way that I can contribute to what you're doing. And I feel like a certain amount of that would have happened even if I weren't doing it for App Camp for Girls, just because I've been here and like made friends and, and met a lot of people. So when I ask questions, I sometimes get that. But like, think for a minute about other communities that you've been a part of and think about what the barrier of entry was for some of those communities, and this is exactly how high it was for me. Like, I'm not a tall person, and even I made it over that. Like, that to me was the thing that was really amazing about it. So I continue to be super excited to be part of the Apple community, for things like this. Because there was never a person who said, you're not supposed to be here, this isn't for you, it's gonna be too hard. You know, I didn't get anything like that. I just got, like, it was assumed that it was a thing that I could do. And because I'm a girl and I really like my laptop, that's not always the reaction that I get. So seeing this was very, very exciting. So I wanna make sure you guys all know, this community is awesome. I'm sure you know that, but I'm gonna underline it for you now. This community is awesome. And this slide is here because I think this slide is hilarious. 
Um, it's a site in Portland. It's uh, uh, downtown, around the corner from Voodoo Donuts, for those who care. Um, but this was how I felt when I, when I first started going, we need to administer machines. What does that mean? How does that work? What tools do you need? Can I do it with my laptop? Do we need a whole other machine that is just dedicated to solving this problem? And so I couldn't figure it out. And like, I, I didn't even know what I didn't know. So it felt really weird to sort of try to ask questions because I felt like I was flailing. Like, I'm probably not using the right terminology. I don't even know what it is that I do know because it doesn't seem like I know anything. So I don't even know what I don't know. So it was that whole unknown, unknown thing. And it was, um, it, was, it was very frustrating. So there were days that felt a lot like that. So that's basically it for most of my slides because now we get to screenshots. So this is B-Squiz, I suppose to say. Uh, they come up with their own team names as well. So all of these you'll see like at the top what the quiz is and uh, what the team name was. Um, so here's some of the stuff that I learned about becoming an admin. I'm still not like full on, I absolutely admit it. Like if there was some sort of newbie badge, I would still be wearing it. But here's what I have learned about becoming an admin and it's something, and a lot of that is stuff that is, that is helpful if you are a person who's trying to look out for others who maybe don't have the experience that you have and you're trying to contribute. So, next one. Oh, there's Phil. And, uh, surprise. Uh, so the first thing is to take a minute, and these are all exactly what they gave. I didn't realize they had a build in that one. They put that into their presentation. Uh, take a minute and dig it through. Uh, with, like, part of the problem that I had was I, I didn't feel like I knew anything, so I just threw my hands up a lot and went, I don't know, I'm just going to have to go ask somebody. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm going to have to. But a few times, like, I would be working with somebody, and then, like, I'd be, you know, texting someone and trying to get some questions answered and then they'd be like, I have to go, like I'll get back to you after, you know, whatever it is that I have to go and do now. And if I stopped and thought about it, sometimes I, could, I figured out that I had the answer, I just wasn't coming at it the right way, or I was letting being frustrated be the thing that was making me feel like I was failing, even if I wasn't failing, I was just like, worked up about it, and I'm like, well it didn't work immediately, this is stupid, I quit. And then like, if I stopped and thought about it, I could find the way through or at least find the way to what my actual question was or what my actual problem was. And being able to have a good idea of what that is is the first thing, you know, to have Joe Potter Saul, right? Knowing the path to battle. So finding that and, and being able to ask the question I'm actually trying to ask is really important. And like that's the thing that I have found all through my life is like you, if you're asking the right question, you're so much further along than if you're just trying to aim sort of near it instead. So that was and sometimes it was even just reading it in front of my computer, standing there and saying out loud what the question was, and then realizing that actually isn't what I'm trying to get across at all. I'm trying to find out this other thing. Uh, the should you say is uh, at a family reunion. Uh, this was their scenario. If you're at a family reunion, is there a point where maybe you should just say it? So. <laughs> So a few, uh, there were moments where um, if I did stop and think it through, I did figure out that I actually did know the answer to the question I was trying to answer or solve, or solve the problem that I had. Uh, I, okay, it happened like twice, but it happened. And that's the part that's important, because I actually did know that I was letting being frustrated about a tool or being frustrated about a process or something that wasn't doing exactly what I wanted it to do, get in the way of what I was actually trying to accomplish. And so sometimes I was better off uh, stopping and thinking it through because again, either I have a better understanding of what I'm up against, or maybe I actually do have the answer and I just didn't realize that I had the answer. So, and so two times that that worked, I assure you, I can give you names of people who were super excited and I figured it out for myself because otherwise I would have been texting them or messaging them about it. Uh, this is, uh, would you survive the 1300s? This is like, how far would you get back? Uh, another thing I learned is admitting. Admit it, I'm stubborn. I don't want help. I don't want to ask for help. I don't want to bother other people with like whatever it is that I'm trying to sort out. 
So sometimes it's really hard for me uh, to be able to ask somebody for help or, or even just admit that I don't know. And so being able to sit down and do that, if I work all the way through something and can't get to where I want or the computer's not doing what it's supposed to do and I follow all these steps and I'm trying to get wherever it is and it's not working for me, then being able to sit down and go, I need help. Can, can you look at this and tell me, you know, and being able to have, because it's sort of embarrassing, but it's also really validating that somebody just comes over and goes, you missed a comma, and how everything works. You know, like all of us have been there, right? Like some tiny little thing that somebody else comes over to help you with and instantly your problem is solved. So, I spent long enough in front of computers that I always feel like I should be able to figure it out. Like, it's been a long time, I'm not going to tell you how long, but it's been a long time. And I feel like I should be able to have a handle on this, and sometimes you just don't care. So. Uh, so, you know, sometimes like you can't even do it with a web search when you walk through whatever it is you're trying to do. You go Google something and, you know, if you're having trouble with photos, ha ha, good luck. If you're having trouble with Word, you know, pages, ha ha, good luck. Uh, but this is going to talk about how uh, Apple is apparently also being Microsoft at on web search for names for applications that you can actually find out about. This is not so much. Part of the problem that I had you know, with, with web searching is not being able to maybe find a resource that I needed. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to like come here and suggest to all of you, here's an awesome thing, like if you were, um, if you were in the last talk where uh, Scott was talking about Swift Playgrounds and how Swift Playgrounds are awesome and the things you can do with them, uh, you know, that's super great, but only the people who were in that talk got the opportunity to find out the stuff that Scott was able to tell you about Swift Playgrounds. Sometimes it's hard to broadcast that message out there, and sometimes it feels like you're just sort of rolling it up and putting it in the bottle and hucking it in the ocean. And that's not necessarily going to get that answer to me when I need it over here. So that sometimes is an issue. So if you have good ideas about how to fix that, though, I'm willing to bet that Ed would like to talk to you about presenting that issue. <laughs> um, another thing I learned about getting Getting something installed is paying attention to everything. Um, I don't, I don't always understand everything. I read a lot of Mac admin stuff. I read a lot of tools. I've come to a lot of talks. I didn't always understand everything that I was hearing, or even know like what, how that would apply to whatever I'm doing. And I am good at. I read a thing about that. I read that somewhere. And so sometimes, like. This is one case where your web history can work for you. I can search my web history and find the thing that, that, that thing I read that time. Because I'm really good at being able to track that back down. And you never know where that source is going to come from. Um, you know, so there, there's stuff that I've read that wasn't necessarily, like I remember a detail from something that was related to some other thing that I was actually reading. And then I can go back later and go, yeah. You know, I read this article about printers, and one of the things that it said was this thing about drivers or whatever, and I need to know that because one of the things we have to do when we set up the machines is something with print drivers, and I can go back and find that thing I read about. Uh, I think Charles talked about print drivers briefly yesterday, and uh, I think we all sort of feel very PC load letter about them sometimes. So I'm just going to admit that. Like, uh, one of the jokes at App Camp is they call me the printer whisperer, and I don't want to be a printer whisperer, I want to be a printer whisperer. Take one of those lightsabers from the other night and just um, part. So you know, some you never know where that where that inspiration is going to come from. So you don't you know, like just because it's not necessarily a Mac admin related blog or podcast or article that you're reading, doesn't mean that it's not necessarily going to work for you. And so sometimes those other details show up in other places, so you can find out about those things and still end up being. No, it may not seem related, and then it will totally end up being related later. So, which I know doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, it sounded really coherent in my talk when I was doing this speech for her earlier. So, let's re this is one of my favorites, by the way. Who are you in the murder mystery? This is like a true young adventure situation, and at one point the blood was animated to drift down to the next question, which was super great and really hilarious to come from like eight grade girls. They were like, Murder mystery! And we were super pumped about it. So um, you can find out more in the chats. Um, 
Um, so I just want to review the stuff that I told you about so far. So if you're up against something that isn't working, you take a second and you think it through so that you can ask the right question or see if maybe you actually do know the answer. Uh, that's really important. And then once you have that idea of what ha what's actually happening or, or a clear idea of the issue, uh, being able to see if you have a resource available to you or someone else available to you who's also a resource. You know, a friend of yours or somebody that you work with or somebody on a mailing list who may be able to help you with the issue that you're having. And then checking out all the sources that you have because you never know when that thing that you read that time is going to come in handy for whatever it is you're working on now. And that can be important. So when I was thinking about how to be able to sort of distill this down, I know it's the last talk before lunch and, and you know, we're winding up kind of in the home stretch conference-wise, so I didn't want to like burden everybody with a bunch of stuff and you know, pens and have to write things down. So I was trying to figure out how to turn it, how to turn this advice into something that would be really easy for everyone to remember. And as I did this, it seemed like I was coming up with advice that sounded really familiar. So if you're a new admin, like me, or you're not, like a whole lot of you, um, the recipe for success basically comes down to take a moment and think it through. Team up with other people so you can make progress. And keep an ear out for information you can use. And what does that come down to if you distill that even further? Now I know Greg, Greg Rick rolled everybody yesterday in his talk with slides, and that was really awesome. And I'm not Greg level Rick rolling. But what I can do is be inspired by Greg Rick rolling and instead do this. Really have a whole lot of in-depth context. I that. So. 